Chapter 1. The Beginning, My Fear of English. Section 1. Why I Decided to Learn English. A Wake Up Call. I'll never forget that fateful meeting at work. It was a typical Monday morning, and everyone gathered in the conference room, waiting for the foreign client to join us on a video call. My boss had asked me to introduce myself briefly in English. It was a simple task, yet it felt like I had been handed the most difficult assignment of my life. When the moment came, my mind went blank. Words jumbled together in my head. My palms were sweaty, and my heart pounded so loudly I was sure everyone could hear it. Finally, I managed to stammer, Hello, my name is. Uh. I. No good English. The client smiled kindly, but I felt humiliated. I avoided eye contact for the rest of the meeting and left the room determined to never let this happen again. That day, I realized that knowing English wasn't just about being able to watch Hollywood movies or travel. It was about survival in the modern world, at work, in social situations, and even in simple day-to-day -day interactions. Dreams held back by language. My dreams had always been big. I wanted to travel to different countries, make international friends, and explore the world beyond the borders of my hometown. I wanted to read famous novels in their original language and understand inspirational speeches without relying on subtitles or translations. But these dreams always seemed out of reach. Whenever I imagined myself trying to speak English abroad, I pictured blank stares and awkward silences. The fear of being judged held me back. In addition, I had younger siblings who looked up to me. They were just starting to learn English in school, and I wanted to set a good example for them. How could I tell them to try their best if I wasn't willing to face my own fears? Section 2. My Initial Fear of English A Mountain Too Tall to Climb When I first started thinking seriously about learning English, it felt like an impossible mountain to climb. Everything about the language intimidated me. Grammar Rules Words like present perfect continuous tense and gerund sounded more like advanced mathematics than language. I didn't even know where to start. Pronunciation. How could ow be pronounced differently in though, rough, and through? The inconsistency baffled me. Listening. Whenever I listened to native speakers, it felt like they were speaking at 100 miles per hour. I could barely catch a word, let alone understand a full sentence. The more I thought about how much I didn't know, the more paralyzed I felt. It was easier to avoid English altogether than to face my shortcomings. The humiliating experience that changed everything. One afternoon, while walking through the park, a tourist approached me and asked, Excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest coffee shop is? I froze. I understood the question but didn't know how to respond properly. Panicked, I blurted out, Go straight, Big Three. The tourist looked puzzled and asked, Big Three? Do you mean tree? I nodded awkwardly, realizing my mistake. The embarrassment lingered long after the tourist walked away. This small moment made me realize two things. I desperately needed to improve my speaking skills. It was okay to make mistakes because they could be funny and harmless. 
That incident, though humiliating, became a stepping stone for me to push myself further. Section 3. My first attempts to learn English. 3.1 The Trial and Error Phase When I first started learning, I made every mistake imaginable. I tried multiple methods, hoping one of them would work. Memorizing long lists of vocabulary. I carried a notebook filled with English words and their translations. I spent hours memorizing them but couldn't use any of them in real conversations. Studying grammar intensively. I bought thick grammar books and tried to understand every rule. However, the more I studied, the more confused I became. The rules were overwhelming, and I couldn't remember them when I needed them. Watching English movies with subtitles, while watching movies was enjoyable, I didn't actively engage with the language. I read the subtitles instead of listening to the dialogue. Despite all my efforts, I wasn't making real progress. I still felt tongue-tied whenever I tried to speak English. It was disheartening to put in so much effort and see so little improvement. 3.2 The, I'm about to quit, moment. There was a point when I almost gave up entirely. One evening, after a frustrating day of studying, I sat at my desk, staring at my notebook, and thought. Maybe I'm too old to learn a new language. What if I'm just not talented enough? Other people seem to learn so easily, why can't I? I closed my notebook and told myself I was done. But deep down, I knew I couldn't give up. English was too important for my career, my personal goals, and my family. I decided to take a short break and come back to it with a fresh perspective. Section 4. Finding the Courage to Continue 4.1 The Power of Small Wins After my short break, I decided to change my approach. Instead of focusing on perfection, I set small, achievable goals. Learn five new words a day and use them in a sentence. Practice speaking for 10 minutes a day, even if it was just talking to myself. Watch one short video in English and try to imitate the speaker's pronunciation. One day, I successfully ordered coffee in English at a cafe. The cashier understood me without needing to ask me to repeat myself. It was a small moment, but it filled me with pride and gave me the motivation to keep going. 4.2 Encouragement from Others I was lucky to have supportive friends who cheered me on. One of them told me, the only people who never make mistakes are the ones who never try. This simple piece of advice stuck with me. I realized that my fear of making mistakes was holding me back more than anything else. I also joined an online community of English learners. Hearing about their struggles and successes made me feel less alone. We shared tips, encouraged each other, and celebrated every small victory together. Section 5 Lessons from the Beginning Stage 5.1 Embracing Mistakes One of the most important lessons I learned was to embrace my mistakes. Instead of seeing them as failures, I started seeing them as opportunities to improve. 
For example, when I mispronounced a word, I would look it up and practice it until I got it right. When someone corrected my grammar, I would thank them and make a note of it. Mistakes became my greatest teachers. 5.2 The importance of consistency I realized that learning English wasn't about studying for hours at a time. It was about doing a little bit every day. Even 20 minutes of practice made a big difference over time. I created a routine. Morning. Listen to a short podcast or watch a YouTube video in English. Afternoon. Write a short journal entry in English. Evening. Practice speaking aloud, even if it was just repeating phrases from a textbook. Conclusion. My first steps toward change the beginning of my English learning journey was the hardest part. It was filled with fear, frustration, and moments of self-doubt. But it also taught me some of the most valuable lessons. Progress comes from consistent effort, not perfection. Mistakes are a necessary part of learning. Small victories build confidence and momentum. Looking back, I'm grateful for the challenges I faced. They gave me the determination to keep going and laid the foundation for everything I've achieved since then. Section 6. My Struggles with Speaking English 6.1 The Day I Couldn't Order Food I vividly remember one of the most embarrassing moments of my life, the day I tried to order food at a restaurant while traveling. The waiter was friendly and patient, but I could feel the growing line of people waiting behind me. All I wanted was a simple dish, but I couldn't remember the word for it in English. Instead of saying, grilled chicken. I pointed at the menu and blurted out, I want chicken. Hot. With. Like. Smoke. You know? The waiter looked confused, and I could hear someone in line chuckling softly. My face turned red, and I ended up pointing awkwardly at another random dish on the menu just to escape the situation. Later, I laughed at myself, but it was a humbling moment. I realized how much anxiety speaking English caused me in real-life situations and how important it was to practice basic communication. 6.2 A Failed Small Talk Moment Another unforgettable moment was at a company event. A foreign colleague approached me, smiled, and asked, How's your day going? I panicked, not because I didn't understand the question but because I didn't know how to respond naturally. I ended up saying, Yes. My day is. Good. And you? While my colleague responded politely, the awkwardness lingered. I walked away feeling embarrassed. Reflecting on that moment, I realized that even simple, casual conversations needed preparation. I started practicing small talk responses like, not bad, age. Section 7. Turning my anxiety into action 7.1 Finding the right motivation One of the biggest turning points in my journey was shifting my focus from fear to motivation. Instead of focusing on how bad I felt when I couldn't speak English, I began thinking. Giving a confident presentation at work. Making friends from other countries. Traveling and connecting with people from different cultures. This mindset shift made all the difference. 
I stopped seeing English as a burden and started seeing it as a gateway to a better future. 7.2 Practicing in private since speaking English in front of others made me anxious, I started practicing by myself. I'd stand in front of a mirror and have imaginary conversations. For example, if I imagined being asked, what do you do for a living? I'd practice answering, I work as a job title. I really enjoy my work because I'd practice ordering food or asking for directions. I even pretended to be a tourist asking for help. At first, it felt silly, but over time, I became more comfortable forming sentences and hearing my own voice in English. This private practice gave me the confidence to try speaking with others. 7.3 Learning to laugh at myself one of the most liberating moments in my journey was realizing that it's okay to laugh at your own mistakes. I remember a time when I told someone, I'm very boring in this city. I meant to say, I'm very bored in this city. They burst out laughing, and instead of feeling embarrassed, I laughed along with them. Mistakes like this taught me to let go of perfectionism. Every time I made a mistake, I learned something new. I realized that most people are kind and willing to help if you show effort. Section 8. Practical advice for overcoming fear 8.1 Start with what you already know. In the beginning, I felt overwhelmed by how much I didn't know about English. But instead of focusing on everything I couldn't say, I decided to start with what I could say. For example, I learned simple, everyday phrases like, how are you, and thank you. I practiced introducing myself, hi, my name is, name. I'm from, country. By focusing on small, practical phrases, I started building confidence and a foundation to grow from. 8.2 Break it into small steps. Learning English felt like a massive task, but I discovered that breaking it into smaller, manageable goals made it less intimidating. Some examples of my small steps included Memorizing five new words a day and using them in sentences Watching five-minute YouTube videos in English Practicing one grammar rule each week These small steps eventually added up to big improvements 8.3 Practice Listening Everywhere One of my biggest challenges was understanding spoken English. To improve, I started listening to English everywhere. While cooking, I played podcasts or audiobooks. While commuting, I listened to English songs and tried to sing along. I watched TV shows with subtitles to improve both listening and vocabulary. At first, I only understood a few words here and there. But over time, my listening skills improved, and I could follow conversations more easily. 8.4 Speak without fear of judgment One of the hardest parts of learning English was speaking in front of others. I worried about being judged or laughed at. But I discovered that most people are understanding and supportive. Here's what helped me. Find a language partner. I found a friend who was also learning English, and we practiced speaking together. We encouraged each other and laughed off our mistakes. Join online communities. 
I joined English speaking forums and participated in discussions. Writing comments and chatting with others helped me gain confidence. Talk to strangers. When I felt ready, I started practicing with strangers, like shopkeepers or tourists. Every small interaction helped build my confidence. 8.5 Reward yourself to keep myself motivated, I created a reward system. For every milestone I achieved, I treated myself. After completing 10 hours of practice, I bought myself a new notebook. After successfully having a conversation in English, I treated myself to a nice meal. Celebrating these small victories kept me motivated and made the journey more enjoyable. Section 9. Reflections on my journey so far. Looking back, my fear of English wasn't about the language itself. It was about the fear of failing and being judged. Once I learned to embrace my mistakes and celebrate small wins, everything changed. My journey was far from perfect, but every step brought me closer to my goal. I wasn't fluent yet, but I had taken my first steps toward confidence and competence. Key takeaways from this chapter Fear is normal. Everyone feels scared when starting something new. The key is to push through the fear and take small steps forward. Mistakes are your best teacher. Don't let the fear of making mistakes hold you back. Each mistake is an opportunity to learn. Consistency is key. Even 10 minutes of practice a day can lead to significant progress over time. Find joy in the process. Celebrate small victories and learn to laugh at yourself. This will make the journey more enjoyable. Visualize your success. Imagine the life you want to live and use it as motivation to keep going. Section 1. Realizing the need for change. After months of struggling with my fear of speaking English, I began to realize that avoiding the language was only going to make things worse. I couldn't keep pretending that I didn't care about improving my English. Every time I hesitated to speak or avoided conversations, I was missing out on opportunities. I knew that if I wanted to move forward in both my personal and professional life, I had to take action. One moment that sticks with me is when I was at a work conference and I saw colleagues engaging in discussions and exchanging ideas freely in English. I admired their confidence and wondered, why can't I do that? That day, I decided I needed to confront. Chapter 2 The Breakthrough My First Step Toward Confidence in English 1.1 The Decision to Take Action I remember the first day I made the decision to overcome my fear of English. I told myself, this is the day I start. I'm going to speak, even if I make mistakes. It wasn't a grand epiphany or a sudden burst of courage, but more of a quiet, determined shift. I knew that I had to stop letting fear control my progress. Section 2 Starting Small the power of first steps. 2.1 Talking to myself. The invisible conversation. One of the first things I did to ease into speaking English was have private conversations with myself. It sounds strange, but this practice was crucial. 
It was in these moments of solitude that I began speaking without the fear of judgment or embarrassment. I would narrate my day. I woke up at 7 a.m., had breakfast, and now I'm going to work. I don't like this rainy weather, but I'll go for a walk later. At first, it felt odd, but over time, I became more comfortable using English. I wasn't concerned about making mistakes because no one else was listening. To point to watching TV shows in English to boost my confidence and improve my understanding of natural, conversational English, I began watching TV shows in English. I started with shows I enjoy, such as comedies and dramas, and kept the subtitles on at first. I focused not just on the words, but also on the rhythm and tone of the speech. This practice helped me become more attuned to how native speakers express themselves. It also improved my vocabulary, especially when I noticed phrases I could use in daily conversations. Gradually, I reduced the use of subtitles until I could understand much of what was being said, even without them. Section 3. Practicing with others. The fear of real conversations. 3.1 The first time I spoke English with a stranger. After practicing in private for a few weeks, I felt ready to speak with someone. The first real conversation was with a stranger at a coffee shop. I still remember the anxiety I felt. I told myself, just ask for a coffee. You can do it. When it was my turn at the counter, I took a deep breath and said, Hi, I'd like a cappuccino. Please, it was a simple sentence, but my heart raced. The barista smiled and repeated the order in perfect English, and I replied, Yes, that's right. Thank you. Although the interaction was brief, it was a huge step. It showed me that speaking English didn't have to be a grand event or a perfect performance, it was just about starting. This tiny conversation fueled my desire to keep going. Three point adjoining language exchange groups. After gaining some confidence from small interactions, I looked for language exchange groups where I could practice speaking with others. I found a local group of English learners who met every week at a coffee shop. I was nervous the first time, but I pushed myself to go. At first, I barely spoke. I was more focused on listening to others and picking up new phrases, but gradually, I began to contribute. I learned that everyone in the group had similar fears and frustrations. We were all there to learn, not to judge. One evening, I remember sharing a personal story about my work and to my surprise, the group encouraged me. They asked questions and I found myself answering without thinking too much about grammar or vocabulary. I was simply communicating. Section 4. Building confidence through small wins. 4.1. Celebrating little victories. As I continued to practice, I made it a habit to celebrate every small victory. Every time I had a successful conversation, whether ordering food, asking for directions, or chatting with a colleague, I celebrated it. One day, I realized that I had spent an entire day speaking English without feeling as nervous as I had before. The thrill of communicating without constantly translating in my head was an incredible moment of growth.
I marked that day as my personal English breakthrough and felt an immense sense of pride. It's all point to a new mindset. I can do this another breakthrough came when I shifted my mindset completely. Instead of thinking, I'm not good enough at English. I began telling myself, I can do this. I will keep improving. This change in mindset was pivotal. Instead of focusing on my mistakes, I started celebrating my progress. I recognized that learning English was a journey and I had already made significant strides. This positive reinforcement kept me going. Section 5. Moving beyond the basics. The road ahead. 5.1 Expanding my vocabulary. Once I felt more comfortable with basic conversations, I decided to expand my vocabulary. I started reading books in English, especially novels and writing down words or phrases I didn't know. I looked up their meanings and tried to incorporate them into my own sentences. For example, I loved the word serendipity, which means a happy accident. I would use it whenever something pleasant and unexpected happened, such as discovering a new cafe or finding a beautiful park. By focusing on learning vocabulary that excited me, I made language learning more enjoyable. Five point to practicing advanced grammar and speaking fluency. I realized that if I wanted to continue improving, I needed to push myself beyond the basics. I began practicing more complex grammatical structures and started recording myself speaking. Listening to my recordings helped me pinpoint areas where I needed improvement, like pronunciation or sentence structure. At first, it was uncomfortable to listen to myself, but with time, I got used to it. I also started speaking with native speakers through online platforms, where I could get real-time feedback. This practice was key to improving my fluency and pronunciation. Section 6 Final Thoughts Embracing the Journey Looking back on the early days of my English learning journey, I'm grateful for every challenge and obstacle I encountered. Each mistake taught me something new, and each small victory fueled my motivation to continue. Learning English wasn't an overnight process, but with persistence, it became a skill that opened up doors to new experiences. As I reflect on my progress, I want to encourage you to take that first step. Speak, even if it's just to yourself at first. Celebrate your mistakes, learn from them and keep going. You will surprise yourself with how far you can go. Key takeaways from this chapter, action is the key to change. The decision to take action, even in small ways, is the first step toward overcoming fear. Start small and build confidence. Begin with simple conversations and gradually challenge yourself with more complex interactions. Celebrate small wins. Every conversation, no matter how small, is a victory. Acknowledge your progress. Mindset matters. Believe in your ability to improve. The right mindset can transform your learning experience. Language learning is a journey. Enjoy the process. Embrace the challenges. And trust that you are growing with every step. Chapter 3. Embracing mistakes. The key to progress in English. 
Section 1. The fear of mistakes. For many language learners, mistakes are the enemy. I certainly felt that way at first dot dot every time I made a mistake. I felt embarrassed and frustrated. I would freeze up and worrying about how others might perceive me. What if I said something wrong? What if people laughed at my accent or corrected me? These fears paralyzed me, and I found myself hesitating more than speaking. At the beginning of my journey, I was convinced that every mistake was a failure. I remember once mispronouncing a word in front of a colleague. It wasn't a huge mistake, but my face turned bright red. I couldn't stop thinking about it for hours. This fear of making mistakes held me back for a long time. 1.1 Shifting my perspective on mistakes One day, while reading a book on language acquisition, I stumbled across a powerful idea. Mistakes are proof that you're trying, it clicked. If I was going to improve, I had to change my approach to mistakes. Instead of seeing them as failures, I needed to view them as opportunities for learning. I started to reframe my thinking. Every time I made a mistake, I asked myself, what can I learn from this? That simple shift in mindset changed everything. Mistakes were no longer something to fear, they became stepping stones toward improvement. Section 2. The importance of making mistakes in language learning. To point one, mistakes are essential for growth. When you're learning a new language, mistakes are unavoidable. They are part of the process. Every time you stumble, you're learning something new. The more mistakes you make, the faster you'll improve. I've learned that language isn't about being perfect. It's about making progress. I've often heard people say, I don't want to speak because I'm afraid of making mistakes. This was my mentality in the early days. But now I can confidently say, the more you speak, the more you'll learn. I remember a time when I was practicing English with a friend. I said a sentence that I thought was grammatically perfect, only to be corrected by her. Instead of feeling embarrassed, I was grateful for the feedback. I made a mental note of the correction and promised myself that I would try to use the right form next time. To point a real-life example, learning from a mistake. One of the biggest mistakes I made early on was not asking for clarification. I was in a business meeting and I didn't understand something a colleague said in English. Instead of asking for clarification, I nodded and pretended I understood. Later, I realized I had misunderstood the entire point, which led to a costly mistake in my work. That experience was a turning point. From then on, I made a rule. If I don't understand something, I'll ask, even if I have to ask five times. Mistakes are okay. Not learning from them is the real problem. This principle has served me well in every language-related situation I've encountered. Section 3 Overcoming the fear of speaking 3.1 The fear of speaking out loud Many learners experience a fear of speaking out loud. I certainly did. The idea of speaking English in front of others terrified me. But I soon realized that the only way to get better was to speak, even if it was imperfect. I started by practicing at home. I would read aloud from books, articles, or my notes. 
It was just me and my voice, so I felt less pressure. Eventually, I began speaking in front of friends and family. Even though I made mistakes, I noticed that my confidence grew with every conversation. I remember one time, I called my friend to practice speaking. I was nervous but I pushed myself to keep talking, even though I felt unsure. I was relieved when my friend encouraged me, saying, you're doing great. That small encouragement helped me realize that most people aren't focused on your mistakes, they're focused on your effort and communication. Three point to realizing that people are supportive, not judgmental. One of the biggest realizations I had was that people generally want the help, not judge. During my first few conversations in English, I was overly concerned about how others would react to my mistakes. I imagined they would laugh or think less of me. But in reality, most people were incredibly supportive. I remember practicing with a native English speaker on a language exchange app. After every mistake, they would kindly correct me and provide feedback. Instead of feeling embarrassed, I felt encouraged to keep going. It became clear that making mistakes was part of the process, and everyone understood that. Section 4 Practical strategies for embracing mistakes. 4.1 Record yourself speaking. One of the most effective ways to become comfortable with making mistakes is to record yourself speaking. This allows you to listen to your pronunciation, identify areas for improvement, and gain confidence in your speaking ability. When I first started recording myself, I was cringing at the sound of my own voice, but over time, I became more comfortable with it. I would listen to my recordings and note down things I could improve on. It's normal to make mistakes, but what matters is recognizing and correcting them. Full point to practice with language partners. Language partners are invaluable when it comes to overcoming the fear of mistakes. Find someone who is also learning English, or ideally, a native speaker who can help you with pronunciation and grammar. The beauty of language exchange is that both parties are making mistakes together, which reduces the pressure. I've had countless language exchange sessions where I made mistake after mistake, but I always learned something new. It's not about perfection, it's about progress. For point three, focus on communication, not perfection. This advice became a game changer for me. Early on, I was so focused on getting everything right that I forgot the most important part of communication. Conveying meaning. In reality, most people care more about whether they understand you than whether your grammar is perfect. One of my most memorable experiences was when I had a conversation with a colleague who didn't speak English as a first language. We both made mistakes, but we were still able to communicate effectively. This taught me that communication is a two-way street. It's about mutual understanding, not flawless grammar. Section 5. Embracing mistakes as a learning tool. 5.1 Learn from every mistake. I now view every mistake as an opportunity to grow. If I say something wrong, I don't get discouraged. Instead, I reflect on it and think about how I can improve. This mindset has helped me become a better speaker and listener. I often write down the mistakes I make 
and review them at the end of each week. This allows me to track my progress and focus on areas where I need more practice. Over time, I've noticed that many of the mistakes I used to make have become less frequent. 5. Point to use mistakes to build confidence. The more I embraced my mistakes, the more confident I became. I began to realize that each mistake was just another step toward fluency. I stopped being afraid of making them and started using them as a way to measure my growth. I encourage you to keep a journal of your mistakes. Write down what you said wrong, why it happened, and how you can correct it next time. This process helps you identify patterns and strengthens your skills. Final thoughts. The power of mistakes in conclusion. Making mistakes is an essential part of the language learning process. The more you make, the more you learn. Overcoming the fear of mistakes allowed me to become more confident in my English speaking abilities. By embracing mistakes as opportunities for growth, I transformed them from something to fit into something to celebrate. So, the next time you make a mistake, don't be discouraged. Use it as fuel to keep going. As long as you keep practicing, your mistakes will eventually become your stepping stones to success. Key takeaways from this chapter. Mistakes are inevitable. Don't fear them. Embrace them as opportunities for growth. Change your mindset about mistakes. They are not failures, they are a part of the learning process. Focus on communication. It's more important to be understood than to speak perfectly. Record yourself speaking. This helps you identify areas for improvement. Keep a journal of mistakes. Reviewing your mistakes will help you track your progress and learn faster. Chapter 4. Building confidence in English speaking. Section 1. Understanding the role of confidence in language learning. When I first started learning English, confidence was something I struggled with. I knew all the grammar rules and could write essays without hesitation, but speaking, that was a whole different story. I was terrified of making mistakes and being misunderstood. Confidence is the foundation of effective communication. Without it, even if you know the right words, you may hesitate or avoid speaking altogether. I learned that language learning isn't just about mastering vocabulary or grammar, it's also about overcoming the mental barriers that stop you from speaking. In my case, I had to change my perspective about mistakes and focus more on communicating than on perfecting every sentence. Once I understood that confidence was a skill I could build, I started actively working on it. Section 2. The root causes of lack of confidence. To point one fear of judgment. One of the biggest barriers to speaking confidently is the fear of being judged. When I started speaking English in front of others, I always imagined that everyone was scrutinizing my every word. I feared that my accent would sound wrong or that my mistakes would make me appear less intelligent. Over time, I realized that the people around me weren't judging me as harshly as I thought. In fact, many people were supportive, offering encouragement when I spoke. The key takeaway for me was that most people are focused on the message, not the messenger. To point to fear of not being understood, 
Another source of my lack of confidence was the fear that people wouldn't understand me. This was particularly challenging in professional settings, where I felt like my lack of fluency could undermine my authority. But I discovered that communication isn't just about perfect pronunciation, it's about clarity and the ability to get your message across. Section 3. Practical Steps to Build Confidence 3.1 Start Small Practice with Friends and Family When I first started speaking English out loud, I didn't have the courage to talk to strangers. Instead, I began practicing with my family and friends. They were patient and encouraging, and their positive reinforcement helped me gain more confidence. I would recommend starting with people you feel comfortable with. People who will give you the space to make mistakes. It could be a family member, a close friend, or even a language partner who is also learning. 3. Point to create a daily speaking routine Consistency is key to building confidence. I started speaking English every day even if it was just for a few minutes. I practiced by reading aloud, speaking to myself in front of a mirror, or even recording myself. This daily practice allowed me to gradually overcome my fear of speaking in English. Here's how you can create your own speaking routine. Pick a topic. Choose a topic that interests you. It could be anything from discussing your day to talking about your favorite TV show. Set a time. Commit to speaking for at least 10 to 15 minutes every day. Record yourself. Listening to yourself can help you notice areas for improvement. 3.3 Join Language Exchange Groups one of the most effective ways to build confidence is to surround yourself with people who are also learning the language. Language exchange groups provide a supportive environment where you can practice speaking without fear of judgment. I joined several online language exchange groups where I practice speaking English with people from all over the world. At first, I was hesitant, but over time, I started to enjoy these sessions. The other members were in the same boat, and we all encouraged each other. These exchanges helped me realize that everyone makes mistakes, and that's okay. Section 4. Overcoming Self-Doubt 4.1 Recognizing and Challenging Negative Thoughts At the start of my journey, I was plagued with self-doubt. I would tell myself, you're not good enough, or your English will never be perfect. These negative thoughts were paralyzing, and they made it harder to practice. I learned that self-doubt was a major obstacle. To overcome it, I began to recognize these thoughts as they occurred and challenged them. Instead of thinking, I'm terrible at speaking, I would tell myself, I'm getting better every day. Affirmations became a powerful tool in overcoming self-doubt. Every time I felt insecure about my speaking ability, I would repeat positive affirmations like, I am capable of speaking English. Every mistake is an opportunity to learn. I am improving every day. These affirmations help to change my mindset and boost my confidence. For point to celebrate small wins. Building confidence doesn't happen overnight, it's a gradual process. Early on, I set small, achievable goals for myself. 
For instance, I aim to speak to a language partner for five minutes without feeling nervous or to introduce myself in English at a social event. Each time I achieved one of these goals, I celebrated it. It could be something simple like giving myself a high five or writing down the accomplishment in a journal. These small wins added up over time and gave me the motivation to keep going. Section 5 Pushing yourself out of your comfort zone 5.1 Take the leap speak in public One of the most effective ways to build confidence is to push yourself out of your comfort zone. For me, this meant speaking English in public. At first, the thought of speaking in front of a group was terrifying, but I knew that the only way to get over my fear was to face it head on. I started with small public speaking opportunities. I joined a Toastmasters group, where I practiced giving speeches in English. The first few times, I was incredibly nervous, but as I continued practicing, I felt more comfortable. Five point to use technology to practice. Technology offers numerous tools to practice speaking and build confidence. I started using language learning apps that incorporated voice recognition. These apps would evaluate my pronunciation and give feedback helping me become more aware of areas where I needed to improve. Some apps also connect you with native speakers, so you can practice real conversations without leaving your home. This kind of technology allows you to practice at your own pace and comfort level while still challenging yourself. Section 6 Real-life example Overcoming fear of speaking at work 6.1 Conquering the fear of speaking in professional settings Speaking English at work was always a challenge for me. I was afraid that my colleagues would judge me or that I wouldn't be able to express myself clearly. But then I realized that my colleagues were more interested in what I had to say than how I said it. I remember one meeting where I had to present a report in English. I was nervous, but I had prepared well, practiced my speech, and reminded myself that it was okay to make mistakes. During the presentation, I made a few minor mistakes, but I didn't let it stop me. I kept going and in the end, I received positive feedback. That experience taught me that mistakes are less important than confidence and preparation. It's not about speaking perfectly, it's about speaking clearly and effectively. Final thoughts on building confidence. Building confidence in speaking English takes time and consistent effort. The key is to push through self-doubt Practice regularly and embrace opportunities to speak, even when you're not feeling 100% ready. Remember, confidence isn't about being perfect. It's about showing up, making mistakes and growing from them. The more you practice, the more confident you'll become. And before you know it, speaking English will feel natural and effortless. Key takeaways from this chapter. Confidence is a skill. It can be built over time with practice and a positive mindset. Start small. Practice speaking with people you trust before branching out. Challenge negative thoughts. Replace self-doubt with positive affirmations. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. 
public speaking and using technology are great ways to improve your confidence. Celebrate small wins. Recognizing progress, no matter how small, will keep you motivated. Chapter 7. Grammar Made Simple Grammar is often seen as the most difficult part of learning a new language. Many students fear it, avoid it, or simply don't know where to start. However, understanding grammar is essential to speaking and writing English correctly. The key to mastering grammar is not memorizing a bunch of rules, but learning how to apply them in real-life situations. The building blocks of grammar. Grammar may seem overwhelming at first, but breaking it down into smaller pieces makes it easier to manage. In English, we start with understanding the basic sentence structure. Subject plus verb plus object. This is the foundation of almost every sentence. For example, she reads a book. Subject. She verb reads object. A book. The subject tells us who is performing the action. The verb explains what the action is and the object indicates what the action is being performed on. Practical advice. Start with the basics. When you first begin to study grammar, don't try to learn everything at once. Start with the essentials. Articles A and the verb tense is present, past, future. Prepositions in, on, at, Pronouns he, she, it, they. Adjectives and adverbs big, fast, very. Focus on building a solid understanding of these core concepts. Once you're comfortable, you can move on to more advanced grammar topics like conditional sentences, reported speech, and relative courses. Common grammar mistakes. Even advanced learners make mistakes with grammar. But identifying and fixing these mistakes is crucial to improving. Common errors include Subject verb agreement. She don't like it versus She doesn't like it. Word order in questions. She can speak English well versus Can she speak English well? Confusing tenses. I have seen him yesterday versus I saw him yesterday. Practical advice. Embrace mistakes. Making mistakes is part of the learning process. When you make an error, take the time to analyze it and understand why it happened. If you don't know why something is incorrect, Ask a teacher or a language partner for clarification. With time, you'll start to recognize patterns and avoid common mistakes naturally. Grammar in context. The best way to learn grammar is by seeing it in context. Watch TV shows, listen to podcasts, or read books in English. Pay attention to how native speakers use grammar in different situations. This helps you understand the rules without memorizing them. Daily practice tip. Take 15 minutes a day to focus on one aspect of grammar. Whether it's learning a new tense or practicing word order, consistent daily practice will help reinforce your knowledge. Chapter 8. Practicing Speaking in Real-Life Situations One of the most daunting challenges in learning English is speaking it. Many learners struggle with finding opportunities to practice speaking. 
while others fear making mistakes in front of others. However, speaking practice is crucial to becoming fluent. The more you speak, the more natural it will feel. Why speaking is so important, speaking is the key to communication. Even if you understand grammar and vocabulary, if you don't practice speaking, you won't be able to communicate effectively. Speaking helps to improve your fluency, pronunciation and confidence. The best way to practice speaking. The best way to practice speaking is through conversations with native speakers. However, this isn't always easy to do. If you're not in an English-speaking country, consider finding a language exchange partner or joining a language group online. There are many platforms where you can connect with people who are learning your native language and who speak English fluently. Practical advice. Use technology to your advantage. There are many apps and websites that allow you to practice speaking with native speakers or other learners. Apps like Kalatalk, Tandem and Italki allow you to connect with people from all over the world. Schedule regular speaking sessions with your language partners and don't be afraid to make mistakes. The goal is communication, not perfection. Simulate real-life scenarios. If you can't find a partner to speak with, simulate speaking situations on your own. Practice ordering food at a restaurant, asking for directions, or making small talk with a friend. You can also record yourself speaking about various topics and then listen to it later to evaluate your fluency and pronunciation. Practical advice. Focus on communication, not perfection. Many learners worrying about their accents or making mistakes when speaking. While it's important to work on pronunciation and grammar, the goal should always be effective communication. If you don't understand something or can't find the right word, don't worry. Use paraphrasing or body language to express yourself. Native speakers will appreciate your effort and will help you improve. Overcoming the fear of speaking. One of the biggest barriers to speaking is fear. You might worry about being judged, sounding foolish, or not being understood. It's normal to feel nervous, but don't let this fear hold you back. Remember that making mistakes is a natural part of the learning process. The more you practice speaking, the less you'll fear it. Practical advice. Start small. If you're new to speaking, start with small, manageable conversations. For example, greet people in English, ask questions and give short responses. As you gain more confidence, you can increase the length and complexity of your conversations. Daily speaking tip. Set a daily speaking goal. Start by speaking for 10 minutes a day and gradually increase this time as you feel more comfortable. You can record yourself speaking or practice speaking in front of a mirror to gain confidence. Chapter 9 Overcoming Common Mistakes in English Mistakes are part of the language learning process, but the key is recognizing them and making corrections. English learners often make the same mistakes, and it's helpful to identify these common errors early on so you can avoid them. Common mistakes in pronunciation. One of the most common mistakes is incorrect pronunciation. 
English has many words that are not pronounced the way they are written, which can be confusing for learners. Some common pronunciation mistakes include silent letters, for example, knife, psychology, misplaced stress, for example, record as a noun versus record as a verb, vowel sounds, for example, ship versus sheep, practical advice, listen and imitate. To improve your pronunciation, listen to native speakers and try to imitate their pronunciation and intonation. Watch movies or listen to podcasts in English and pay attention to how words are stressed or pronounced. Repeat the words and phrases until they sound natural. Grammar mistakes. Another common mistake is related to grammar. Some learners struggle with subject-verb agreement, tenses and word order, for example. She go to the store instead of she goes to the store. I have seen him yesterday instead of I saw him yesterday. Practical advice. Practice with a partner to fix grammar mistakes. Practice with a language partner or tutor who can point out your errors and correct them. Focus on understanding the rules behind the mistakes and apply them consistently. Chapter 10 Developing a daily English routine Consistency is the key to learning any language. A daily routine will help you stay on track and make steady progress. It doesn't matter how much time you dedicate each day, what matters is consistency. The importance of routine. Having a daily routine helps you build good learning habits. It also ensures that you're constantly exposed to the language, reinforcing what you've learned and preventing information from being forgotten. Practical advice. Create a balanced routine. A good routine should include listening practice, for example, listening to English podcasts, watching movies, speaking practice, for example, talking with a language partner, speaking to yourself, reading practice, for example, reading books, articles or news in English. Writing practice, for example, journaling in English or writing short essays. Daily practice tip. Aim for 30 minutes to one hour of English practice each day. Even if you only have 10 to 15 minutes, use that time to focus on one skill. Whether it's listening, speaking, or vocabulary building. Chapter 11. Building your vocabulary and understanding idioms. Vocabulary is one of the most critical components of learning any language. A rich vocabulary allows you to express yourself clearly and accurately, and it makes reading and listening more enjoyable. That building vocabulary doesn't have to be a tedious process. In fact, with the right approach, it can be fun and rewarding. How to build vocabulary effectively. One of the best ways to expand your vocabulary is by reading. When you read books, articles, or even social media posts in English, you're exposed to new words and phrases. Instead of simply skimming through the text, take the time to look up words you don't know. Write them down and try to use them in your own sentences. Practical advice. Create a vocabulary notebook. Keep a notebook or a digital document where you write down new words and their meanings. Review this notebook regularly to reinforce your learning. When you encounter a new word, try to use it in context. 
For example, if you learn the word serendipity, try using it in a sentence like I think it was pure serendipity that we met at the coffee shop today. Another great way to build vocabulary is by grouping words by topic. For example, you can create a list of words related to food, travel, or emotions. This method helps you remember words more easily because they are organized in a way that makes sense. Practical advice. Use flashcards. Flashcards are a great tool for memorizing new vocabulary. Write the word on one side and the meaning, or an example sentence on the other side. There are many apps, like Anki or Quizlet, that allow you to create digital flashcards and review them on the go. Spaced repetition, which is a method of reviewing words at increasing intervals, is a powerful way to retain vocabulary. Understanding idioms and phrasal verbs, in addition to learning basic vocabulary, it's essential to familiarize yourself with idioms and phrasal verbs. These are phrases that don't always make sense when translated directly. For example, the idiom break the ice means to initiate conversation or make people feel comfortable. And a phrasal verb like pick up can mean to learn something or to gather something. Practical advice. Learn idioms in context. The best way to learn idioms and phrasal verbs is by seeing them in use. Pay attention to how native speakers use them in conversation, movies or TV shows. Once you know how they are used, Try using them yourself in casual conversations. This will make your speech sound more natural and fluent. Common mistakes in vocabulary usage. While learning new words, it's common to misuse them, especially when it comes to synonyms. For example, the words large and big are similar but not always interchangeable. Large might be used for physical dimensions a large room, while big is often used for abstract concepts a big decision. Practical advice. Don't be afraid to ask. If you're unsure about the word's usage, ask a native speaker or look it up in a dictionary. Most dictionaries provide example sentences that show how words are used in context, which can be very helpful. Daily vocabulary tip. Make a goal to learn at least five new words every day. Write them down. Use them in sentences and review them regularly. With time, you'll build a broad and varied vocabulary. Chapter 12. Developing Listening Skills Listening is one of the most important skills in language learning, yet it's often the hardest to practice. In real-life conversations, the speed and accent of native speakers can make understanding difficult. However, with the right approach, you can significantly improve your listening skills. Why listening is crucial, listening is essential for effective communication. If you can't understand what someone is saying, it's impossible to respond appropriately. Moreover, listening also helps you develop your pronunciation, rhythm and intonation. By listening carefully, you'll be able to hear the subtle differences in how words are pronounced, which will help you improve your speaking skills. Practical advice. Start slow. When you first start practicing listening, it's okay to begin with slower material. There are plenty of podcasts, 
audiobooks, and YouTube channels aimed at beginners that speak at a slower pace. Gradually increase the speed as your skills improve. This will help train your ear to understand English at normal speed. Use subtitles and transcripts. Another great way to improve your listening skills is by watching movies or shows with English subtitles. This allows you to hear the words while reading them, which reinforces both listening and reading skills. You can also find transcripts of podcasts or YouTube videos that allow you to read along with the audio. Practical advice. Listen actively. Active listening is when you focus entirely on the speaker, trying to understand the meaning and nuances of what they are saying. You can practice active listening by pausing the video or podcast after a few sentences and summarizing what was said. This helps you to retain the information better and understand it more deeply. Practical advice. Listen to different accents. English is spoken with many different accents, and exposure to these will help you improve your listening comprehension. Try listening to speakers from various parts of the world, including the US, the UK, Australia, and other English-speaking countries. This will help you get used to different pronunciation patterns and vocabulary. Common listening challenges. Some learners struggle with understanding spoken English because they focus too much on individual words. In reality, fluent speakers often slur their words or omit sounds in rapid speech. Instead of trying to understand every word, Focus on the general meaning and keywords. Over time, you'll become more comfortable with understanding English in a natural, fluent context. Daily listening tip. Set aside 10 to 15 minutes each day for focused listening practice. Listen to a short podcast, watch a YouTube video, or listen to an audiobook. Focus on understanding the overall meaning rather than every single word. Chapter 13. Writing Skills for Effective Communication Writing is a skill that many learners overlook, but it is essential for both academic and professional communication. Whether you're writing emails, reports, essays, or social media posts. Writing in English can help you improve your clarity of thought and expression. Why writing is important. Writing allows you to organize your thoughts and communicate them clearly. It's an essential skill for academic success and is often required in the workplace. Improving your writing will also help you in other areas of language learning, as it reinforces grammar, vocabulary, and sentence structure. Practical advice. Start with short writing tasks. If you're just beginning, start with short writing tasks. Write simple sentences or paragraphs on familiar topics, like your hobbies your daily routine, or a recent trip. Gradually increase the complexity of your writing as you become more comfortable with expressing your thoughts in English. The importance of editing. One of the most important steps in writing is editing. After writing a paragraph or essay, Take the time to review it for grammar, spelling, and punctuation mistakes. Editing allows you to improve the quality of your writing and to learn from your mistakes. Practical advice. Use writing prompts. 
Writing prompts are a great way to practice your writing skills. Find a list of writing prompts online or create your own based on your interests. Set a timer for 10 to 20 minutes and write as much as you can without worrying about making mistakes. This will help you think more quickly in English and build your writing fluency. Practical advice. Get feedback. If you can, share your writing with others to get feedback. A teacher, language partner, or even an online writing community can help you improve your writing by pointing out areas that need improvement. Don't be afraid of constructive criticism. It's an essential path of improving your skills. Common writing mistakes. Many learners struggle with sentence structure and punctuation. For example, some learners write run-on sentences or fail to use commas correctly. Make sure your writing is clear and easy to read by using appropriate punctuation and breaking long sentences into smaller ones. Daily writing tip. Set a goal to write at least 100 words a day. This could be in the form of a journal entry, a short to say, or a response to a writing prompt. Consistency is key to improving your writing. Chapter 14. Enhancing your pronunciation. Pronunciation can be one of the trickiest aspects of language learning. It's easy to get frustrated when native speakers don't understand what you're saying. But with practice and patience, your pronunciation will improve. Why pronunciation matters? Pronunciation is important because it affects how easily others can understand you. Even if you know the grammar and vocabulary, Poor pronunciation can make communication difficult. It also helps you sound more natural and fluent, which is a huge confidence booster. Practical advice. Focus on sounds. Start by identifying the sounds in English that are most challenging for you. For example, Many learners struggle with the TH sound in words like this and that, or the vowel sounds in words like ship and chi. Practice these sounds in isolation and then in words and sentences. Use online resources to practice pronunciation. There are many apps and websites that can help you with pronunciation. Websites like Forvo allow you to listen to native speakers pronouncing words, and apps like Elsa Speak or Pronunciation Power can help you practice and improve your pronunciation. Practical advice. Record yourself. Recording yourself speaking is a great way to track your progress. Listen to your recordings and compare them to native speakers. Pay attention to your intonation, stress, and rhythm, and focus on the areas where you can improve. Subscribe to the channel and share this video if you found it valuable. Knowledge becomes more meaningful when it's shared.